oh, I cannot believe this is the last day. I really can't. Um, but for our final day together, uh, I'd like to kick us off with a few fun facts. And you know, that's what I like to do now. Uh, so today, uh, Sunday, October 20th, we are celebrating the birthdays of rapper Snoop Dogg, because I know that's how y'all roll. <laughs> also singer-songwriter Tom Petty. Yeah. Yeah, so we're getting closer too. Uh, and educator John Dewey, who was the founder of the philosophical movement known as pragmatism. Oh. And one of, my, one of my favorite quotes of his is that education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. We almost had a church moment. I heard some. <laughs> I love it. On this, on this day in history, uh, in 1968, Jackie Kennedy married Aristotle Onassis. In 1774, Congress created the Continental Congress, uh, calling for a ban on trade between the U.S. and Great Britain. Uh, this is also known as the original Brexit. <laughs> And in 1864, Abraham Lincoln formally established Thanksgiving as a national holiday, which ignited the ethnic and cultural debate of pumpkin pie versus sweet potato pie. Uh, the correct answer, by the way, is sweet potato. Just let me know. All right, you guys, are we ready to get into our, our paper sessions this morning, our Sunday paper sessions? That was good. I'm proud. You guys have learned well. Our, uh, our paper sessions moderator this morning uh, is a professor in the Department of Physics at California State University, Fresno. Uh, he's taught, I think, for 15 years. He has developed and taught classes on engineering, engineering physics, quantum mechanics, and other scientific topics, of course. He was actually um, part of the team that helped discover a fundamental particle of nature, the top quark. Yeah, so now, but here's the thing, I, and, I, and I have to confess, and I'm very sorry, um, that when I read that, it, it was late, and um, it, yeah, I was tired, and my brain combined the words. So I read top pork as twerk, <laughs> and I thought, a scientist who can twerk? That's awesome, he should be on Ellen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a wonderful thing getting a good night's sleep, some caffeine, and proofreading, uh, so I didn't embarrass myself. Uh, so I don't know if he can twerk or not, uh, but you can find him on Instagram at Physics Fun, uh, where he shows off his extensive physics toy collection. Like, if you guys are not following him, you really should be, because he's been posting since 2015 and using Instagram to promote science and math as recreation and fun. And, and that's how we, how we move forward. Uh, so please welcome our, our Sunday Paper Sessions moderator, Ray Hall. Well, thank you for that nice introduction. And so this is a tradition that goes back to another meeting that happened out in Las Vegas called the Amazing Meeting. And it started at the very first one, yeah, this Amazing Meeting alum. And, uh, from uh, 2001, uh, every year they had these Sunday papers. And we're, I'm so pleased that uh, we're continuing that tradition here at Psycon because I think it's a really important one to get some new voices out there. So let's get right into it. Uh, the first talk, let me pull it up here on the computer real quick. So our first speaker is a student, Jessica Tuttle. She is a student in the Department of Behavioral Sciences and Leadership. Um, she is studying under another uh, alum of this conference, Greg Foster. And she's going <clears> to <throat> tell us about the very challenging science of trying to understand why flat earthers believe what they do. She's <laughs> also a, well, she's in the Department of Behavioral Science and Leadership at the U.S. Air Force Academy. So please welcome Cadet Tuttle to the stage. <laughs> Good morning! So, as he said, I'm Jessica Tuttle. I'm a cadet at the Air Force Academy, hence the uniform, and I worked underneath Dr. Greg Foster. So, what we did was we wanted to find a way to analyze arguments made by science and pseudoscience in video social media. 
Oh, wrong way, sorry. <laughs> so the context for pseudoscientific debates has changed over the years because now we have a thing called technology and we have social media. And posting can occur without any peer review or oversight. You can make up an idea, sit down at a computer, type it out within five minutes, and suddenly you have a following, or you have people refuting what you already just said in what you just made up. So we have multiple different platforms which to utilize, whether that be written social media like Facebook, or video social media, or just websites and blogs in general. They utilize this idea of the group polarization effect, where you will find people like you and they'll stick with them because they'll also just bring you information that you want to hear because it supports your beliefs, which is called the congeniality bias. So written social media allows for this rebuttal, and I'm sure a lot of people in here have attempted this or have seen people do it, or maybe you've done it yourself. But people who refute to written social media are refuting the words. And the words aren't necessarily an author. They're not a human, they're not a person, they are words. And you're fighting words with words. And there's not this human connection, there's no emotionality involved with it, and it's easier to read and move on because that connection doesn't exist. And the reason I bring all this up is because there's a research done by Anna Kata of McMaster University in 2012 called WUD 2.0. What they found was that a whole bunch of different anti-vax websites and blogs all had similar arguments, and she developed this way to see how much the arguments were being used, how effective these arguments were used, and how many different places she could find them. We took that idea and we applied it to video, so, so oh, pardon me, video social media. We focused on YouTube, and the reason for that was that there were a lot of interviews done with flat earthers describing how they brought, got brought into the movement based on YouTube videos. It's, it's a, this massive developing sphere of influence, which anyone can make a video with a camera or a microphone, it's very low cost, sometimes you don't even need a camera. But suddenly we're having this face-to-face -face connection where you're hearing someone's voice, you're hearing their passion, you're hearing their emotions, and you feel connected to that. Content creators and the consumers have a connection through this emotional chain of components. We call this the YouTube vortex which is where you will be sitting down and you might want to just look at one little thing about the flat earth because why not, it seems fascinating. And suddenly you're an hour and a half in, surrounded by flat earth movement and no idea how you got there and suddenly you're be beginning to believe some of the things that you, they keep repeating and you don't really know why. And so that's what we were really looking at was we wanted this way of coding videos in order to understand the arguments in, why do you start believing those things even though you are a skeptic and you're a rational human being and sometimes you don't want to believe some of the things that YouTube is telling you? As far as the coding scheme was concerned, there was a couple of challenges because rather than with written social media where there's some organization to it, you're dealing with human consciousness, which doesn't have a whole lot of organization sometimes. So we're dealing with tangents and people jumping back and forth with arguments but we figured out a way in order to create this coding scheme and we applied it to the Flat Earth. And the reason for this is the Flat Earth movement isn't really on written social media we are finding. There was a couple of websites, a couple of blogs, they had Facebook, Twitter, but they weren't all that active. Whereas with videos, there was a lot of them. And if anyone just Googles or YouTubes videos about the Flat Earth, you will find way more than you have ever bargained for. The video that we chose to look at was called Impossible. It was published June 6th of 2017, and it was posted by Celebrate Truth, which has 137,000 subscribers. It's run by Robbie Davidson, the person that is responsible for the Flat Earth Convention every year, and he's one of the big proponents of the Flat Earth Cruise that might be happening later in 2020 to go see the ice wall. <laughs> <laughs> The length of the video was hundred, or, me, an hour and 37 minutes, and all of that was arguments, and they're all different arguments being made, and this video was viewed 1.2 million times. That is a lot more than the people subscribed to Celebrate Truth, and that shows just how many times people will go to these websites, watch an hour and a half of arguments being made by the Flat Earth, and just beginning to fall into this YouTube vortex. As far as the coding scheme was concerned, we had all these different places to draw in these arguments. There was websites that we could look at, 
There were videos that we watched prior to the coding just to see, what, get an idea of what they're saying. And then Dr. Foster last year went to the Flat Earth Conference and had his own experiences to draw on. We took those arguments and we sent them to a Flat Earth expert, Glenn Branch, at the National Center for Science Education. And we also sent them to a local Flat Earther just to see how accurate our argument list was. After getting some feedback, we sat down and we tried to make a way for researchers to watch videos and quantify the content of the arguments. These are our main arguments up here. So obviously the dismissal of evidence against the Flat Earth and the pro providing evidence for the Flat Earth, physics, topography, uh, astronomy, conspiracy theories of why no one knows the Flat Earth exists because conspiracies, science questioning, and appeals to authority. These are our results, and I know it's kind of hard to see for those in the back, so the main ones that we're going to focus on are to your guys' far left is NASA. And NASA was talked about 13% of the time, which is far more than the next highest, which was a conspiracy run by unclear entities. So they didn't know who was the conspiracy, but they knew someone was part of this conspiracy. <laughs> the other one was talking about the Bible and appealing to the fact that the Bible says that the earth is flat, so the earth therefore must be flat. This is a little clip or a screenshot of one of the things we found in the video. And here was their argument. NASA and other space agencies and space organizations are all connected and part of a bigger organization to hide the flat earth. The evidence, there we go. These little swooshes in every single logo. So because all of the logos had this component, this swoosh, therefore they all must be part of something bigger, therefore they're, they might be hiding something, might, they might be hiding the flat earth. So, research supports the role of social media and the videos. Because you guys saw that and yeah, there was some connection of thoughts being put into that last clip, but not, you're being indoctrinated with an hour and a half of things like that. And so, video social media is on the rise in pseudoscience and research really supports that. Flat Earth YouTubers are also becoming more numerous and more popular. Even those that post satirical videos about the Flat Earth are bringing attention to the Flat Earth movement. It's uh, the bad publicity is still publicity thing, so even as more people post about it, you're getting this idea that a lot of people are going to still believe the Flat Earth no matter how much you say, okay, well we see the curve, or okay, it's not Photoshop. But the more videos that need to be coded, we can get a better picture of the movement itself. And it's not just flat earthers, because they're not alone on YouTube. There are a lot of different videos for a lot of different fake science or pseudoscientific groups. As far as video-based formats go, there's a new age of social media use. There are rising platforms every single day for video social media, whether that be TikTok, Twitch, Snapchat, and even existing platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter already are indoctrinating this idea of video social media and they will use it and different algorithms within their sites to keep you there. Because they will recognize that you want to watch something so they'll keep giving you what you want to watch to keep you on their sites far longer than maybe you want to be on their sites. So why does the Air Force Academy care? Well, it's better to be round. <laughs> It's better to be able to look at all the evidence available and make decisions because cadets like myself will be officers within the military next three years. And we will be in leadership positions where we need to make decisions and if we can't make decisions with all the evidence present, then there's a good chance that we're making the wrong decision. Also, there's like what we talk about with the congeniality bias. And that this idea that maybe if I believe something and everyone around me believes that same thing and no one's bringing up any counter, uh, counter evidence or argument, maybe that's not a good thing because I can make a not correct assumption, I can make the wrong decision, and it could potentially be dangerous. So with those two thoughts in mind, the Air Force Academy has a learning objective of critical thinking where they will have us question evidence efficiently and know why something's happening, how to use that evidence to make the decisions. And we can also recognize lawful behavior based on existing evidence 
and we can then give lawful orders and follow lawful orders. As far as the world is concerned, especially skeptics, it's kind of important to remember that video social media is kind of here to stay. As much as some of us may not want it to, it's going to stick around because it is becoming more and more popular. The best thing to do is recognize that these arguments are being made and understand these arguments so you can have the evidence in which to counter them and you yourself can then be a better rounded person.